Well, good morning. This is Michael DeVille. I'm here in the wonderful studios of West USA with Joe Needham. Today is September 4th, 2020. Now, Joe is a uh, is an investor that we've done business with uh, each other for a number of years. Joe is on the strategy and the, he has some experiences he could share with you. I think you're going to find that there's a lot of commonality. I think these are things that you probably have uh, encountered. Now, I'm, I'm a baby boomer. Joe is much, much younger than I am, but he's looking to the same type of uh, uh, issues that, that we have in the fact that somewhere along the line, we want to quit working. We don't want to continue working all our, all our lives. So Joe and I have done business for five or six or seven years ago. He's been, he's yeah. been on the uh, uh, strategy since then. Joe has been in the corporate world and we've uh, taken a lot of his uh, portfolio and taken that wealth in it that he accumulated in his portfolio and transferred into real estate. And of course, in the real estate, we have um, gotten both capital gains and income. So Joe, what's going on in your life now? You're, you're getting to the point where your life has changed and what's a daily, what, what's, a, what's Joe's life like? Well, thank you, Mike. It's, uh, it's, it's one of a pretty little stress, actually, because I, I feel my financial independence. And when I say that, it's not really a cliche. It's what I've experienced based on the past several years of, of buying uh, single family homes and renting them out and, and enjoying the cash flow that comes from that. Now, we've employed several strategies uh, on your own personal residence. We, we did uh, for a lot of people are just getting started because no matter how old you are, you should have real estate in your portfolio. So with one of the strategies for Joe, we, we did an FHA, did we not? On, we on did. One of personal residences? We did. How, how did that work down. out? Well, that was uh, on that one. It was a small percentage down FHA. And I, I put down uh, less than $10,000. It was about $9,000. And within three years, we were looking at it, two or three years, the equity, the, the value of the house increased so much that the equity was about 100000 And you were just looking at it again, it's one hundred and fifty or something. And that was based on a less than $10,000 investment. And that's a real asset. You can walk up and touch it versus, you know, your, your, um, 401k statement. So that property, so for a lot of folks that uh, are just getting started, you're able to buy a property for $9,000 in a big growth market. Keep in mind, we're here in Maricopa County and probably the number one growth market in the United States. I mean, the growth markets, of course, are Florida, Texas, and Arizona, Maricopa County next to California has a lot of demand. So Joe was able to buy a property for $9,000 and grow that $9,000 uh, at um, appreciation to well over $100,000. Absolutely, absolutely. And at the same time, you're enjoying tax benefits because you get to take all the, all the interest <laughs> off Wonderful. and all the, all the real estate taxes. We've also done some things with your uh, 401k. We've converted that to uh, an IRA for- Self-directed uh, IRA. So yeah. done to a <laughs> self-directed IRA. So you're able to put real estate into your portfolio. Yeah. We've also done it outside the IRA. Just recently, uh, Joe had a property in Tucson and we sat down and decided what we we're going to do with that uh, property in Tucson because Tucson's still a fairly good marketplace. Phoenix and Maricopa County, probably a much, much better marketplace than, uh, than Tucson. The growth here is, is uh, quite a bit more, I think we're experiencing probably about 50% more uh, here in Maricopa County than so how did that work out for you? Well, it worked out very well. It's, it's a property I had, a bit lovely. I loved it, great location, but I wanted, I really preferred to have it um, in, here in Maricopa County. So we decided to sell it, but we did a 1031 exchange, so there was no taxable event. So how did a 1031 exchange go? Okay, just walk someone through, because you, you're not in a business, but I, from, a, from a user standpoint, how did that work out for you? Well, so it was the first time I've ever done it. It worked out great. That's the bottom line. But uh, the per, you hire a company who, who does 1031 exchanges. They do them all day. That's all they do. And Michael uh, referred me to somebody very good. And this company let me know, here are the things you need to do. Here are the things you know, when they need to happen. That exchange company was working with the title company, with the mortgage company, with Michael. Everybody was on the same page. There were no surprises. When it was time that something had to be done, um, we were just alerted. And so we did it. And it just worked out very well. There were no surprises. Ultimately, that property 
uh, I was able to do the exchange and it's on a tax, uh, non-taxable event. So it worked out very well. So <clears throat> from my standpoint, as a portfolio manager, I sat with Joe. We looked at this asset in, uh, in Tucson, which was doing okay. It was, uh, was certainly performing, but we thought we could get much, much better performance here in Maricopa County. Not only that, but we then had the ability to do a 1031 exchange where we would uh, not experience any capital gains, would not be a non-taxable event. And we were able to take one property and buy two properties. So now we doubled the exposure that Joe had to the real estate industry in a much, much better market. And how has that worked out for you so far this well, it's, year? It's worked out even better than I thought. I knew it would work. I just, I just know it. We've done a few of these. We know where the success is. We knew it would be successful, but beyond my imagination, we bought both of these earlier this year. And in what, a six month period of time or so, they've gone up, what percentage were you telling me? 14, 13, 12, 13 <laughs> 12 to 14 percent, yeah. Not year over year, that's within the same the year. Seven so months, yeah, eight months. And, and we got renters in right away, it uh, has worked out very well. So when you and I sit down, uh, we have our forms, do we not? We do. So when we do, uh, when we do the analysis and the calculations on your, on, the, on your purchases, you want to go over that a little bit or you want me to do that? Uh, you know, you can do that. It's a very simple form, but it tells you whether this is a, a really good investment or a marginal investment. So before we, we present anything to Joe, we want to do the, we, we do the uh, selections. We, we look into the marketplace and find out what our best options are going to be. Because you know that I say that every house will rent, but not every house is a really good rental. So we're in Maricopa County, we have a kind of a tight marketplace, but we still have lots and lots of properties to purchase. So it's not like there aren't anything here for us to buy. So we looked at, uh, we looked at uh, two properties. And of course, we sat down and when we buy the properties, we decide what the vacancy factor is. We put in a property manager because you always use a property manager. Absolutely, every time. And so we know what, and we also put a repair escrow in, because why is that? And so, so things have to be replaced, a refrigerator or an air conditioner or something from time to time. And what you don't want to do is go, oh my goodness, how am I going to come up with a thousand or two thousand to repair something? You always have that little bit of reserve. And that's part of the, the calculation to determine the, the, the expected cash flow on the property and whether that property is the best, um, best option. Yeah, so we always, we, we, we put into effect your vacancy. We put yep. in fact, we put a uh, calculation to pay for your property manager. Yes. We put in a calculation. HOA. To put in the HOA. Yeah. We put in uh, cost of sales and we put in uh, repair escrow so that these are all accumulating. So when you do have to have a dishwasher or a garbage disposal replaced, mm -hmm. we've got the money for it. Absolutely. What's been, now I, I hear this a lot. A lot of people don't, they want to manage the properties themselves. They want to save that uh, 70, $80 a month. Now keep in mind that 70 or $80 is, of course is a fee, but it's tax deductible. Most of us are earning and you're probably going to be able to deduct that from your taxes. So how has using a property manager changed your life? Well, Thank you, Mike. So the property management company, these are professionals. This is what they do. They know, they know the property management laws. They know how to screen tenants and they take care of all the daily calls. I never get a call regarding, you know, I have a drip leaking faucet. All that's taken care of. I really only get a call or an email when, oh, we got to buy a stove. Uh, you know, uh, it looks like we're going to have to do a little bit of landscape. It'll cost an extra some amount of money. We discuss it and then I give the okay. So it's, I'm always in charge, it's always mine, but, but it's almost hands-free. I'm really not involved in the day-to-day, -day. only when a decision needs to be made that's important um, that I've prearranged with a management company. And I just, every month I just get a check. Could you be skiing in uh, Colorado? Uh, absolutely, because, because the property management companies take care of everything, how to respond to an HOA, getting clients in, I don't need to be there. I can be skiing, like you said. I can be on a cruise. I can be doing anything. And of course, they handle the tents. They screen the tents. Do Absolutely, they, not? They, they do. And they keep you out of trouble. Keep you out of trouble. They're experts in the Landlord Tenant Act, which is the controller of the, the laws and regulations here in Arizona. And they know those, and they're able to get good tenants in. And, and I know they're good because I always they always pay their um, rent on time, and they stay for years. We're very responsive to our to yeah. our uh, 
tenants. And if something breaks, hey, you know what, we're going to be there and we're going to fix it fast. We want to have nice homes for our folks and they stay for a long time. And that's beneficial not only to them, but also to me. And of course, these people are staying uh, three, four years, I would guess, five or, years. Or more, days. yeah. So um, well, let's get back to the property managers. So your life is pretty much free because you really don't need to see them. All that is is a phone call or an email, is it not? That's correct. So it's pretty passive. It's very passive. The only time I need to go by the property is just because I want to just drive by and look at it. It's, it's, it's very hands-free. What I would never do, in my opinion, is ever try to manage the property myself. I've had people tell me, oh, it costs too much money, the 70 80 $90. Yeah, nice it's the best money you would ever spend because you do not want to be there um, trying to do a professional's job with limited information. You want to hire professionals. Yeah, well, you're strictly the investor. You're not the landlord. The Absolutely. property manager there is the landlord. a difference between you know, the investor have... and property management. Yeah. You yeah. never have to interface with the tenants at all. Never. Yeah. A lot of them I've never seen. I just, I just get the rent. <laughs> so, so Joseph, a uh, multiple property owner, he has quite a few. So we have experienced, I think, uh, raising rents. I, I just did have one of my personal residence, $150 a month. Now that's a month times 12 months. That's $1,800 a year. Now, when we talk about putting a, a program together and putting onto the strategy, what we'd really like to do is do a goal of uh, bundles of 10 properties and into a bundle then start another bundle. So if you have 10 properties in a bundle, and you raise the rent 150 bucks times 10 properties, that's $1,500 every month times 12 months, that's $18,000 a year. So, And that's the increase. That's the increase. Oh, that's exactly right. Yes. And that goes almost strictly to you. So tell me about your experience with your, with your friends at work. Well, and so my friends at work, so, um, uh, well, if, you, if, you, if you're talking about the part where I just, just no, I'm working and just both of those and, 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 and all your, your, your co-workers as well. Well, one of the things they're all our do, age, are they not? They, they are. I'm a baby boomer too. And, and a lot of them are, and a lot of them have had very good um, careers, um, making pretty, pretty good money in, in, as engineers or whatever they're doing there. But because of rental income, I decided, and I, I convinced the company to just let me work four days a week. I really didn't need to work five, uh, like three day weekends. And they, they agreed to it. And so I, the employees would ask me, uh, aren't you, uh, what, aren't you missing that, uh, that 20% from that one day a week, you're not, no longer getting paid. And my response was I'm not trying to be um, smart aleck or anything, but I said, no, I, I don't miss it at all. And they would look at me in astonishment. And I would later tell them, here's how you do it. You do it with rental real estate. And that's the only way you can really retire is you, it's about cash flow, not lump sum. And that cash flow, I get checks every month, regardless of what happens. Yeah, you bring up a good question because lump sum, if you talk to your financial uh, planners, when you start talking about the Bengen rule, which I think you're alluding to, Bengen rule says, well, you, you, you take this, this million dollars and then you start drawing down. And of course, uh, there's not much growth in that million dollars then at that point. And after 30 years, it's it's all gone. Not so when you buy real estate. What happens after 30 years? It still it still keeps going. Absolutely. And just like you said, you give yourself a raise when you raise rents. And so so it's about cash flow. The key is cash flow, not lump sum. And I would talk to some of the folks at work, and I said, you know, it, it, try just buying one. You can. Oh, well, I can't afford it. Yeah, you can. Let's, let's talk to Mike. Let me tell you what I've done. And I've shared a couple of them with him. And I said, but you have to think cash flow. You can't think lump sum. And I said, cash flow will carry you through your retirement. That's right. And, and, and of course, a lot of these folks don't have, it's the guidance. So that's why we talk about the strategy. You, you know, this is not so difficult that everyone can't do on their own. It's the fact that when you're we're working with a team, just like Joe alluded to when we did this 1031 exchange, we sat down, we decided, we made some decisions as to what we're going to do, where we're going to go, what we're going to do once we sold the property, and how we're going to deploy the capital. But it was a team, and you use professionals. Now, the folks Absolutely. that you work with, uh, sometimes they're lost. They make good money. They just don't know what to do with the money that they're making. And um, I think sometimes when you talk, what's been your experience when you're talking with these guys that are getting to be our age? What, what's their concerns? And their concerns are of running out of money. They, th they think Social Security, but Social Security isn't enough. And Social Security won't give you, sometimes there are no increases, but it's not enough. So they think, well, I have Social Security plus my lump sum. 
Well, first off, if you're in the stock market, that lump sum is subject to a drastic change. Could go up, could go down. And I've seen three or four times in my life where I lost half my portfolio. I never got a phone call, never got anything. And then you spend the next two or three years trying to recover what you lost. Um, real estate houses may go up or down, but the rents come in every single month. And that goes right into your checking account. That's money that is yours. It's not a statement. It's in your pocket. Yeah. So, and that brings up a good point. Once you get, there's certain phases in your life. So as you're going through uh, when you're younger and you're still in that capital formation where you want to get more and more capital, you, we, we have a different strategy for that. When we get to be Joe and my age, we're more concerned with the income that we get rather than the capital appreciation. I mean, capital appreciation is certainly nice. We don't want to, we don't want to squander that capital, but we want to know how much income I'm, I'm getting each and every month. So there's, there's that transfer from um, wealth, which would be sometimes you get into a lot of these stocks that uh, are big growers, mm -hmm. but they don't throw off any income. You have to keep selling your stock in order to pay the Yes, pay the and a lot, of, a lot of them think, um, will I save enough to, out, to last me the rest of my life? Well, first off, you don't know. And secondly, if, if you leave it in the stock market, it may go down in value. You need something that's going to give you cash flow, irregardless of what the stock market does or any market does. You need that rental income. And then you know you're going to have income the rest of your life. To me, that's financial freedom. And that's what I wanted to do because I've seen so many people trying to retire and the stock market crashes and they've got to work two more years. Uh, they have no other income. They're, there's, they, they were only looking at it in one perspective and not cash flow. Well, I, I think that uh, this, is a, this is an American travesty, quite honestly, that we have so many of the baby boomers and actually even older, because I do, I do consult with people who are much older than me in, in their 80s, and they run out of money. This is why when you go to Albertsons or you go to Safeway or you're at Home Depot, the people that are, are uh, ringing up the groceries or taking care of, the, uh, of your items are, are baby boomers because they, they're not there to socialize. They are there to pay the electric bill. So um, any, any uh, words of wisdom for these folks? Well, you know, I've seen that. And, and like you mentioned, I think I heard you mention earlier is this is an age limited. Um, you can be at any age and participate and have the cash flow that will give you some level of security. True. Yeah, that's true. Whether it's one house or 10 or whatever the quantity is, you're, you're going to have that security of a constant cash, a check every month. So that's key. So maybe you want several different investments. You'll have to talk to your advisor. Um, I've determined what's best for me and this is what's best. Yeah, we wouldn't tell anybody to have all their money in, in real estate. They should no. certainly have some kind of real estate in their portfolio. And you bring up a good, a really good question is that being financially free is not an age. Retirement or semi-retiring semi is not an age. It's a financial decision. And you can do this at any age that you want. Your life can easily change by getting the right investments. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, it, we have all kinds of strategies. So if you're just starting out, now Joe's even experienced, he's alluded to this, you can start out with some high leverage. You know, here in, in, in America, we have a 30-year mortgage. You know, outside of the U.S., there's no such thing. They don't, they don't know what a 30-year mortgage is. And extremely low interest rates right now. It's a wonderful thing. Oh, it's just, it's, just it's, <laughs> it's like a gift. So we're talking, we're going into the accumulation phase, which is part of our timing models, which I think you and I, uh, we did this last year because the timing model was telling us that it was time to, to really yes. make some decisions. So once we, we, we used the timing model and got Joe from out of Tucson up into Phoenix and beat the, beat the big rush. So Joe got in before the run-up and that was strictly because of the timing model. And these things, these tools are available to you. We're more than happy to talk to you about it. We're more than happy to do this, but you can do this at no matter what age, if you're 75 years old, Absolutely. You should be doing this. Absolutely. I, I, I know of folks, whether they're family or friends, that are in that, um, that age range, and all they ever worry about is running out of money. And to me, that should never be. You work all of your life. You know, during those years, maybe you should worry about whose birthday is coming up and how are we going to plan for it versus I hope I don't run out of money. That's one of the saddest things that Very I sad. see, and I see it a lot. So can you think of any downside for, let's just talk, say if you're 75 years old, you know, you're still, you're, a lot of folks are still working at 75. This is, this is really awful. Yeah. So 
75 years old, it used to be that you'd be dead by 75. Yeah. Now we're looking at uh, maybe living to 95 or 100. I mean, my wife's uh, mother is, is 93 years old. Yeah. You know, so my wife has an opportunity to live into her hundreds. So we need to provide for that. So if you're 75 years old, is there a downside to taking some of your capital and buying a rental with this? Can, can you think of anything? Jeff? Absolutely not. That might be the one thing that, that, that continues your income in your older age. Otherwise, you're spending it down and, and scrimping, hoping to survive and, and not outlive your money. With, with cash flow, rental income cash flow, that's no longer a consideration, or at least it takes part of that worry away. Um, but, but it's something that's, it, there's nothing better I've seen. We've done it several times. You've helped me do this and I am so pleased with it. And I tell people you can do it too. It's, it's not just something Joe magically or accidentally <laughs> happened. It's not like a lottery ticket. It, it takes decisions and it takes a team and professionals and you can do it. Yeah, we have, we have a method. So we have, we have a discovery. So, we, you know, so I keep saying, Every house will rent. Not every house is a good rental. And of course, we have a discovery. We have a, a, a parameters which, which these properties have to fit. So let, let's talk about that. So if you're 65 or 70 years old, you're getting ready to retire. One of your concerns, of course, is income. And most people are going to get Social Security. Some people will have a pension. Some people will be living off their savings. But this is all going to deplete. So I, I hear this when I, when I uh, consult with people. They say, well, I'm 65 years old. I don't want to be involved with tenants. You're never involved with a tenant, are you? I am not. It's hands-free that you have a property management company. I would say my opinion is that's mandatory. You must have a property management company uh, for a lot of good reasons. It's the best money you can spend. And of course, we build this into the returns. So if you're 65 or 70 years <clears throat> old, all you're doing is doing your investment. So when you buy a piece of property, they're just buying, they're buying an investment that, that cash flows. So they're buying a cash flowing asset. So that's a, a accumulate appreciating assets that cash flow. So when you buy a, a house, you can go to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia and go diving. And, and get a check. And get a check. And, and every single month, no matter what I'm doing, and, and it requires no labor. Um, we've all worked in our lives. This is money you make every single month that um, you don't do it. You don't really do any work. You, you might talk about it once a month or every three or four months in case you have to buy a new oven or something, but, but there's no work involved and you get checks in the mail. I have to tell you, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's been really, really good. Too, <laughs> it's worked really well. Every month I call Mike and I call, guess what day this is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just well for me. That's a good day. Yeah. So it's one of the best day of the month. Yeah. So uh, one other thing is that uh, I, I hear from folks, they're concerned that this is going to hold them back. So if you own properties, if you put the properties and you are strictly the investor, this is like putting your money in a money market that the, you get a check each and every month. The money just keeps coming to you. It's an income play. Now, it's not a money market in the fact that it's in T-bills or anything, but it's a very, very conservative investment for yourself. You certainly want to talk to your financial advisor to make sure that something like this is going to work for you. But this is kind of like um, an income vehicle, is it not? I mean, you and I are to the age where I'm more concerned with how much income I'm getting rather than I am so much. Uh, it, it's, it, it's exactly what it is. And, it, and it's also an offset to 401ks. I've been in those for 40 years probably. And I've seen them go up and down. I know about 401ks and I, and I still have that, by the way. So I'm not just solely invested in one thing, but if it weren't for real estate rental income, that 401k is just a number and you can deplete it or that can go in half quickly. So there are some risks to that. So this is just me, how I look at it. If I'm going to retire, I need to have complete ownership of my future. And this is That's how a I really good it. point, Joe. Yeah. Cause you own it. I own it. Nobody you're else. an absolute complete, you have a property manager representing you, but you're the final say. Absolutely. You never relinquish it. The property manager, manager works for you and, uh, and, and they're very good. It's what they do. They're, they're professionals. I learned long ago, you can't know everything. So you get professionals, you get Michael, you get your property management company, you get the 1031 exchange people, you get good escrow title people and you get those people and it's, it's just easy. Um, it, it's just, you're not working hard. These people help you. It's what they do and you're in place and you get checks every month and uh, it, it can work for everybody. 
Good, Joe. You are such a great example. You know, we did. Uh, we did. Uh, you, you've taken advantage. You've taken advantage of all the tax advantages that real estate has. We've done that 1031 exchange. We also did self-directed IRA for you. Yes, we, we did. took some of your 401k money. Yes, and put 1031 and in that a, too. That's a beautiful tool that um, it, it came about in in the late 90s, as I recall. And so, one of the things you can do just very quickly is your 401k. You can transfer it over just like you're gonna go from Schwab account or something else, whatever you're doing, but you can transfer it to what's called a self-directed IRA. That self-directed IRA, you can then invest in a rental home. You can invest in many non-traditional things. So you're not just stuck in the stock market or T-bills or some of the traditional investments. You now have many more opportunities and there are uh, companies that, that specialize in uh, in the self-directed IRAs. That's a great tool. I suggest anybody who has a 401k, take a look at it. It may or may not be for you, but it it will open up the world to opportunities for you. And, and keep in mind that uh, when you talk to your stockbroker or your financial advisor, sometimes they think there's only two assets and that's stocks and bonds. There, there's a whole world of assets out there that you can buy. And, and when you talk to them, I've talked to them before. And it's so like I said, I still have 401k. And so you talk to these guys and you say, okay, well, I've got properties and here's how much money it brings me every month and the property doesn't go down in value, what do you got? And they're like, uh, well, more stocks? <laughs> <laughs> Mitigates risk yeah. a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, we really mitigate risk, absolutely. which is really important at, at our age. We, you know, you, I keep laughing because what it used to be that they said, well, uh, when you lose money, well, you're in it for the long run. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I joke because at my age, I don't have a long run. <laughs> yeah. so I can't afford to lose. And none of my clients can. We have to be extremely conservative. And that's kind of what we do. And I think this has worked pretty well for you, Joe. So any, any questions that uh, that you'd like to bring up or something that, that you? I think I've covered, I mean, any questions anyone has, uh, you know, uh, it's from my experience and I'm not some super genius or anything or just lucky. It's just, we followed an approach and the approach works and we've done it many times. We look at what we want to do and what's the best avenue to, to achieve that result. And We've been pretty fortunate. Yeah, so Joe brings up a good question. We're going to finish up with, with this is that, that uh, Joe and I have a plan. We have a strategy for him. We know where Joe wants to be. We understand the time frame that Joe wants and we know what we need to do to get to that place. And, and me as a, as a portfolio manager and as an advisor, I know where we can plug in the holes in Joe's portfolio that's going to uh, give him the optimum and uh, best return for himself as conservatively as we possibly can. And it has to do because we have a relationship well built up over years, that's what we do. Now, if you have any questions, you're welcome to uh, email to creatingwealth at westusa.com. If you'd like to be involved with us, we're uh, more than happy, we'd love, to, we'd love to talk to your financial advisor or your spouse, we're more than happy to do that. If you have any questions that you'd like to direct to, uh, to Joe, you're welcome to send that to Creating Wealth at uh, West USA, we'll try and get that back to you. And if you really think that you need to call us, we're uh, here at the corporate office. It's area code 602-942-4200. And from Joe and I, we want to wish you the very best. Bye-bye now.